Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I want to show you how to make a soldier fly larva composting bin using a 13 gallon trash can and some scrap lumber. Stay tuned. Welcome back, subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. Soldier fly larva, you say? That sounds a lot like maggots. In that case, you'd be correct. In fact, I came across soldier fly larva when I first started worm composting. These predator-looking creatures were in my worm bin, and I didn't know what they were. So I started Googling, Googling and determined that they were indeed soldier fly larva. They're also known by the abbreviation BSFL. I've been using a pretty rudimentary tube bin system to house my soldier fly larva composting. And I've also been wanting to design a better and cleaner system that will allow the soldier fly larva to separate themselves from the compost. And that's actually a really nice benefit. When the soldier fly larva are ready to pupate, they want to get out of the compost. And so the new design will provide a ramp for them to do that. So I won't go into too much detail about this two bin system, but it's served the purpose for the last couple of years. You may be curious about how composting with BSFL compares to composting with worms. And there are some pretty significant differences. For one, soldier fly larva are fast composters. They multiply quickly. They can convert a huge amount of biomass into their own body mass in short order. And that's what makes them great composters. Think about it this way. The output of a soldier fly larva composter is the soldier fly larva themselves. Whereas the output of a worm composter is the worm tea and the castings. Another amazing benefit of black soldier fly larva is their fat to protein ratio. They take kitchen scraps and food waste and turn them into a perfect balanced food source for chickens or fish. In fact, eventually I plan to get an aquaponics system up and running and I'll be using the soldier fly larva as a food source for my fish. For the time being, I'm taking my BSFL to a neighbor who has chickens. Believe me, those birds are happy to see me. Alright, so there's enough background on why I use soldier fly larva for composting. Let's get started on this build. I'm going to put all of the materials and tools you'll need in the description below. To start, we're going to cut off the bottom of our trash can and we're going to use that for drip containment and we're also going to cut off the lip on the top. I'll be using my twisted sharpie from Greg's Garage for my marking utensil. Check that out at gregsgaragekc.com. I'm actually just going to mark off about an inch. I'm going to cut through the first corner with a saw. and then use scissors to cut out the rest. That's right, this LDPE low density polyethylene plastic number four is soft enough to be cut with scissors. You can come back and clean up your cut a little bit if needed. And in case you're curious, number two and number four plastics, high density and low density polyethylene do not contain any BPA. And here's our drip pan. I'm gonna use my scissors to go right after this lip. The easiest way to do it is to cut off the, the top of the rim first and then even it out. You may have these tabs to worry about on your trash can as well. I'll just slice those off with a box knife. Always cut away. Nice even pressure just slices right through this material. Now we can clean up the cut. You might find this easier to do with the box cutter. Just move slowly and cut away. Of 
clean up these tabs as well if there's any bump left. With our bottom and lip cut off, we basically have a cylinder. A square cylinder. I guess that wouldn't be a cylinder then, would it? But you get the idea. But now we're going to cut it across the bias to create two pieces. Not that I'm biased. We're going to start our cut right where the curve stops on this end and then cutting across to this end. We'll mark that diagonal with the straight edge and then cut it with scissors. Then we'll mark the other side and repeat. Need to make sure we're cutting to the right corner. Because of the taper of the trash can, we're going to have some size discrepancies here, but we'll trim that up later. The two pieces of our trash can are going to become a sloped container. This container is also going to define the dimensions for our frame, so let's clamp it in place and do some measurements. I'm getting basic dimensions of length and width. It's coming in at about 33. The inside width will be set by my catch basin bins that will go on either end. That's coming in at 11 and a half. Our sloped cavity is going to come up and then drop in to a catch basin on either end, allowing the solidify larva to crawl out when they're ready to pupate. So we'll add a few inches to our inside dimensions to allow for the catch basins. I got two pieces of coal bin lumber that are right over 38 inches. So I'm going to cut to that length for my long side. I'm going to use two smaller pieces of scrap to cut the width to 11 and a half. Now I'll square everything up and cut to length. Our catch basin is going to sit up inside the 2x6 frame a little bit. But I also want it off the ground. So I want my legs to be at least long enough to equal the height of the catch basin and the 2x6, which comes in at about 18 inches. I've got some scrap that's actually 20 inches long, so I'm going to make the legs 20 inches. I'll measure these and cut to length. Before we get started on the frame, I wanted to address a comment that I received on my Worm Tower video. Binge Rice said, please, OMG, set your drill to drill instead of screw. And that led to a conversation that Ben and I had where he actually explained to me that I had a clutch on my drill that I didn't know about. Turns out this ring right here allows me to select the torque limit for this drill. Of course, when you're drilling something, you don't want the bit to stop under pressure. Whereas if you put in a screw, you do want it to stop when it reaches a certain torque so it doesn't tear the top off the screw. So this illustrates one of the best things about YouTube. This is a conversation. This isn't just about me helping you. It's about us helping each other. In fact, if you see things I'm doing wrong or have a better idea for approaching one of my projects, please let me know in the comments below. For the record, Ben did apologize for the tone of his initial comment. So Ben, thanks for commenting. Appreciate you setting me straight. Thanks for helping me learn about my drill. A little fist bump for you. Note that that's set to drill. Got a couple of my reuse screws left here. I use those up for this project. Using a coarse drywall screw here.
that hole went a little off. So I'm actually gonna drill and screw the bottom hole first. I wanna make sure this doesn't start to pull it sideways since that hole wasn't perfectly aligned. I'm gonna try and drill it in at a different angle here to Now let's attach the short sides. I'm gonna mark and drill my holes, placing them more toward the center of the two by six to avoid the screws on the side. Line this upright. The birds think I've got it lined up. Let's do it. Now we're going to install our containment area. Makes it sound like a virus. First thing I'm going to do is mark the center line. Outside dimension is 41. So that means 20 and a half for our center. Mark that on both sides. Next, I'm gonna clamp half of the trash can in place as I'm showing you. I need to make sure that the bottom at least passes the midline. You also wanna put this on an angle going up toward the outside end. That'll make the ramp that your soldier fly larva climb up to get out. It's also going to show us where we need to put the outside brace. The brace will go in underneath about here. So once I've got that test fit, I'm going to mark where the brace needs to go and then we'll drill it and screw it. I want the brace just back from the edge of this a little bit, about half an inch. And I want the top about an inch down mark it. Line this up and then mark it on the other side as well. I also need to make sure I've got enough room to suspend my catch basin underneath. In other words, it needs about a three quarters of an inch to an inch of exposed two by six underneath. So that looks good. So make sure my measurements are the same from this side to the other side and then we'll drill it and screw it. And a quarter down, good to go. Before we put the trash can in, we're going to fashion a chute that directs the soldier fly larva when they're crawling out down into the catch bin. And to do that, we're going to use some roof flashing. This is 10 inches wide and long enough for a lot more projects than just this one. We'll start by cutting a piece that is 13 inches long. Be careful, this stuff is sharp. Then I'm gonna cut our 10 inch wide flashing in half. If you don't wanna use flashing, you can use a plastic milk jug or juice bottle to create the chute. To form our chute, clamp down our flashing. We'll make a few marks on this. First, we'll measure an inch and a half up from the bottom. Mark that line. Then along that line, we're gonna measure our 11 and a half inch dimension. This is our inside dimension, but the sides are gonna turn up a little bit. So we wanna center that 11 and a half with about three quarters of an inch on either side. Then we'll mark that down to the edge. Then we're gonna measure two inches in from the edge on the other end, make a mark there, and then connect that mark to our intersection here. Then cut the tab as shown. Then using gloves, and this is a little overkill, all I could find was my welding gloves. We're gonna bend up this line here.
just something to protect your hands from getting cut. Hitting that mark isn't as important as hitting this mark here at the corner. And we'll do that on the other end as well. Of course, if you use a melt carton, you don't need to worry about this. Alright, then we're going to bend down our one and a half inch line. You can use the edge of a table like this, that helps. If you get it started, you can bring it up, work that around. where the gloves come in handy. Again, we're just looking for a 90 degree angle here. There's our chute. Before we install it, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit here. Cut that corner off. This is mainly for safety purposes. Keep in mind this flashing scraps can go in with your aluminum cans for recycling. Alright, so let's install the chute. Of course we'll make another one for the other side as well. The chute is going to fit in like this. Our folded back piece is going to sit on top of our 2x2 two two, and the chute sides are going to direct our solidified larva crawling out to slide down into our collection bin. And they're gonna crawl out, coming up this ramp. To install our chute, we're going to also screw in the first half of the trash can. And we're gonna do that with lath screws. They've got a nice flat head here. It's gonna help really grip well. I'm gonna clamp the trash can in place to hold it up on the other end with about a quarter inch shy of the edge of the flashing. I'm going to start screwing in from the middle first, making sure that my sides are aligned equally because they're going to be stretched out to go flat against the side. I want to make sure i got enough material on both sides. Once I get that middle screw in place, I'm going to make sure I'm aligned correctly and then work my way out to the side. I want to make sure this is flat down to the brace so that the solidified larva can't crawl back underneath it. Once I get close to the edge, I'm going to start pushing this down as I drill. Getting as close to the edge as I can. I want to make sure it's really tight to that corner there. Then I'll finish it off by putting one in the side. I didn't leave myself enough room here to put it in the side, to put a screw in the side, but that's okay. I'm looking for a tight fit between the side and the board. I'm gonna put some flashing along the top to allow the soldier flies to actually migrate along this ridge here. They'll find that line, move right along there as they find their way out into the, the catch basin. Next, we're gonna adjust the depth on this as far down as we can go without our lower edge here crossing the midline. We also want about an inch of coverage between the bottom of the two by six and where we start screwing in this. I'm actually going to put the screw in here and then work my way back this side. I'm going to make sure this is smooth here if you don't have any bubbles along the way. These are three quarter inch lath screws by the way. I want these just a couple inches apart. Again, we're looking to prevent the solidify fry larva from having any kind of room to sneak down behind that lip. Now we'll get the other side. All right, 
right, with this side set up, we're going to repeat those steps for this side. One additional step we'll have, though, is to trim down our other piece of trash can to match this one. Because the taper is going the other way, it's going to be slightly larger, but we'll use the flexibility of the plastic to mate these two pieces up here in the middle and make it work. Put in our bracket. So I ran into a little bit of trouble here. Because of the difference in the taper on this trash can, I'm just barely wide enough um, at this point. The other challenge I had was that uh, there was a little bit of a gap in the middle, more than I'd like, more than I could seal up by screwing these things together. So but here's where we have a little bit of flexibility in this particular design. I was able to move my bracket back about half an inch, or just slide it down this way to give me a little more length on this. And then I'll have a little bit more of a gap between the where the trash can ends um, and before you go over the lip here. Well, not you, before the soldier flies go over the lip. Put in our chute, and we'll put it in our trash can half. Just enough. As long as that corner's nice and tight, I don't need to worry about adding some extra flashing there. Nice and tight. The owls are out. Once I know this is going to mate up correctly, I've got a close gap here, but we'll stitch that up. Once I know how this is going to sit together in the bottom there, I'm going to go ahead and um, trim this off and then put in some screws. I'm just going to eyeball this because my ruler won't fit in there. Then we'll hit this with a box knife. I trimmed off the other side and I'm putting the screws in. I'm going to pay special attention to where these connect here. Make sure that's nice and tight. I'm going to put a couple screws in down the seam as well, as far as the wood goes. I got room for one. I got a bubble happening here, and if I kept putting screws in like this, it's going to chase it all the way down here. So I'm actually going to put a screw in here to lock it down. I'm going to stretch it down this way, lock it down so it won't continue. Got a little bubble right there too, which, just to be safe, I'm going to lock that down too. Keep in mind, these screws along here are supporting the whole weight of what's going to be in this bin. That's why that lath screw head is helpful too, because we've got a lot of surface area holding the trash can in place. Alright, so let's check our work. This end is okay, but it isn't how it's supposed to look. This end is how I think this ought to look. Right up to the edge, nice and tight, enough for a turn up on the edge there. Let's talk about the middle seam here a little bit. It's okay that this is not watertight because I actually want it to drain, but I don't want it to stretch too much more than this because we get a bigger gap. Our compostables will start falling out the bottom. So we're actually going to lace together these two pieces of trash can with some trimmer wire. And to do that, I'm going to drill some holes in, about an inch apart, and then we'll do a stitch with the trimmer wire. I'm going to start with my first hole about a quarter inch in, where I know the wood has stopped. Then I'm going to continue on around. I'm supporting the bottom of the other piece so it doesn't pull apart as the holes go in. I know I've got a pretty tight tolerance right here, so I need to be really careful as I get down to there. All right, I'm deburring this a little bit, clean it up, and then we'll turn it over and stitch it. So I'm going to start my trimmer wire on this side, going in through a hole right here. And I'm going to turn it up on this side so I can reach inside, hold the stitch through. Once I know how much string I'm going to need, I'm going to loosen the screw, wrap it around, tighten it down, and then pull the excess back through. And I'll finish the last screw here on the outside. Always wrap the line around in the direction that you're going to be turning the screw so it automatically tightens it down. And 
trim it off with a box knife. Nice firm connection with our built-in drain holes. To keep our soldier flies from crawling out, we're also going to add a flashing lip to the top of the frame here. So I'm going to cut some flashing strips, totaling a length of 38 inches for both sides. On my 10-inch flashing, I'm going to cut a 19-inch piece and then cut that into four strips. That's going to give me the 38 inches I need on both sides. Starting at the center line, I'm going to tack it down with one brad. When I get to the end here, I'm actually going to cut halfway through this tab. I want that to line up with where our chute starts. Then this is going to get bent in half. I'm going to tack it down once more right here. As I do this, I want to make sure that this connection is really tight to the edge. This tab is going to bend down to fit into this chute. Looks like I need to trim it off just a little. I'm also going to clip that corner off there. Just for safety. And I'll fasten this with a couple of lath screws. This will allow the solder heart larva to climb along here hit that and drop right down the chute into our catch basin. If you get a little gap in this corner here you could just throw some caulk in there and you'll be able to tell if they're able to get out because there'll be a black streak there. The liquid they're leaving behind will make a trail for the other three pieces. Pay special attention to get this connection really tight. You want those to line up well so the soldier fly larva can't get between them. Even if it means re-trimming to get it just right. I'm going to finish off the top edge of the frame with these strips of 2x4. They're the pieces that were left over when I ripped down the legs. That'll also cover up the flashing and give us a nice finished look. I want my lid to have a little slope for drainage. So I'm going to make the front edge three inches tall and the back edge an inch and a half tall. Because my cap board on the side here was a little thinner than this, I'm going to let the side of the lid recess down a little bit to compensate for that gap. I'm going to clamp this down and give it a rip. I could throw this on the table saw, but whenever I can replace electricity with calories, I like to do that. I'll book match these and trim this one down to fit.
I purposely ripped this down the middle so that I have to trim the ends to make it the right size. This will give me flat ends on the bottom of the lid. I need to remember to compensate for that little drop on the side piece. The lid will set up like this. I just need to cut our two long sides to length. I'm gonna hit this with a little Gorilla Glue. There's a little twist to it, but it fits pretty well. These will be entrance holes to allow adult soldier flies access to lay their eggs. Got this set to drill, Ben. Next, we'll add the hinges. I decided to hinge the heavy side of the lid. I'm gonna come in about six inches from the end and mark for the hinge. I'm adding a cleat to the back to support the weight of the door when it's open. Pre-drill this. For the roof on the lid, I'll be using some, some salvaged plastic sheeting. It's actually got a open core which will help with airflow. I see some ants have found my plastic sheeting, so I need to get them out first. Then I'll rip it down to size. I'm gonna have the roof overhang by half an inch on each side. So I'll be adding an inch to the length and the width. Gonna use this strap to make a handle. The last thing we're gonna do before we move the soldier fire larva from my old bin to the new one is make some mounts for the egg laying apparatus, which are basically just pieces of corrugated cardboard that we're gonna suspend above the compost. Soldier fry larvae prefer to lay their eggs next to the compost, not in it. And they love little cavities like this to lay them in. So we're simply gonna cut up some coat hanger, make little bars where we can slide on our corrugated cardboard and slide it off easily when the eggs are ready to be moved down into the compost. Got four pieces. 
we want these pretty close to our entrance holes here that are going to be in this side right here when the top is down you can see the length here I'm basically just going to nail these wires in between the flashing and the little cap just slide on like that if you pull them apart a little bit as you put the corrugated through, you kind of hold it in place a little better. All right, just that easy. And finally, I'm going to make some supports for my catch buckets. Now, you really don't even need to do this. Um, they could just sit down here like this. I want to actually support them up inside, put them off the ground. I'm actually going to make a little piece that goes in underneath here. And I'm going to do that with a piece of bucket handle. The first thing I'm going to do is put the catch basin up inside where I want it to go and then mark where I need this little bracket to be. And start by cutting the curvy ends off the handle here. It's like a bullet. So a nice straight end to work with. I'm going to start with a hole through the leg here at the level I need. And the other side. Then I'm going to drill a hole vertically very close to the edge. Make sure the holes intersect. And the other side. Then I'm going to use the drill bit to tear out the hole that's closest to the edge, creating a groove. And then the other side. The handle is going to go in something like this. We'll bend these parts over so they go out through the hole that goes perpendicular. But then we need to bend this down and fashion it so that it will accept the container coming in this way and still be able to go up into uh, the chute area. I need to bend it this way some to start and then probably back in the other way but at the right point. Then I'm going to bring it across this way and then have it come out that way. A bend here and that's straight up. That's the point. Let's test fit this before we bend the other side. I like it. Spin the other side. I love using stuff like this. Adaptive reuse for a purpose it wasn't intended for. It's of course how I justify my pack ratedness. Put it in. Open it up a little bit to tension up and that ought to do it. Open this up a little bit. 
so it stays in. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna repeat this for the other side. And we'll be good to go. Now let's take it to the woods. When I moved my old Soldier Fly composter, I found this on the ground underneath it. A whole lot of pupated Soldier Flies that I was missing since I didn't have a capture mechanism for them. So these guys will go back in the bin. I'm going to use a transfer shovel to move the compost and Soldier Fly larva from my old bin to the new one. Wigglers. If you want to capture the leachate that comes out of the soldier fire larva composter, you can use the tray that we cut off the bottom of the trash can. Simply put it underneath the composter like this. Well there you have it folks, a soldier fire larva composter that will self-harvest for you. I'll be the first to admit that this was a little more complicated than I saw it in my head, but I like doing things right and it has all the features that I feel like it needs to do what it's supposed to do. Much like the flow through worm composter I built a couple weeks ago, this was my prototype. So I'll do a video in a couple months that will come back and look at how it's operating for me. One thing to consider is that soldier fly larvae are a warm weather composter. Here in Georgia, I've got about another month before this is gonna go dormant for the winter. And what I'll do is I'll transfer everything in here, compost, and soldier fly larva into a garden bed. That's gonna put all those nutrients into the soil and help the soldier fly larva over winter. It'll also help me have a healthy population in the spring once I get this thing up and running again. Let me know in the comments below if you've made this soldier fly larva composter and if you have any questions. Also keep in mind that composting doesn't have to be complicated. A simple pile still works just as well. If a compost pile is more up your alley, check out the video where I made this composter out of crepe myrtle trimmings. When it comes to the soldier fly, I still have a lot to learn. There's an amazing series by Living Web Farms. You can click on the card here to check that out. That series will tell you everything you need to know about the soldier fly and using it as an effective composter. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.